This presentation is called Population Growth, a simple model for the big boom. So we're going to start uh, with what's called simple replacement. And this is where one generation simply replaces the prior and there is no population growth. So in generation one, we have 10 males and we have 10 females. A total of 20 children are born. So each uh, female averages two uh, children who survive to adulthood. Half are male, half are female. And this means the next generation looks just like the one above it. Um, and as we follow through the generations, there is no population growth. Now in our model, we're going to assume for a while here, complete replacement. And this means that as one generation reaches adulthood, the prior generation dies. So all we have to do to calculate growth in our population is calculate fertility. And that makes it a lot simpler. So let's add some growth to this model. So this is a simple fertility driven model. And we're going to add some growth. So the first generation is 10 males and 10 females. But we're going to say 40 children are born to that generation. So on average, each woman has four children that survive to adulthood, half male and half female. And if that's the case in generation two, we now have a population of 40 with 20 males and 20 females. So now the population is doubling from one generation to the next. So here's our little map of this. The first generation, 10 plus 10 is 20. We said on average, each woman has four children who make it to adulthood. And we're going to assume they all survive to reproduce. And their offspring are half male and half female, as are they. And that means we take the 10 women and we multiply that by 4. It gives us a population in the next generation and will be 40. And we said it's half male and half female. So the increase from generation 1 to generation 2 is 20 individuals. Now let's look at the third generation. So we've got our numbers at the top. This is where we ended in the second generation. The assumptions stay the same. So now we take 20 females times 4, and this means our population at the next generation is 80. Now it's 40 males plus 40 females. And the growth from the second to the third generation is 40 individuals. Notice that increment of growth. The rate is staying the same, but the increment of growth numerically is getting larger. Let's go from the third to the fourth generation. So we're starting with 80. Our assumptions are the same. We take 40 times 4, we get 160 for the fourth generation, made up of 80 males and 80 females. And that means our increment of growth numerically is 80 individuals. Let's do one more. So the fifth generation with the same assumptions, starting at 160 for our population, we take those 80 females and multiply that by 4. And our fifth generation population is now 320, made up of 160 males and 160 females. And our increment of growth is 160 individuals. So you can see that with each succeeding generation, we're adding more and more and more individuals. And this is producing a pattern, right? From 1 to 2, we added 20. From 2 to 3, we added 40. From 3 to 4, we added 80. And from 4 to 5, we added 160. And we can expect uh, with our fertility model that this is just going to continue to happen. And we start charting this out and we say, hey, that's not just simple growth. This is exponential growth. And if we follow this out uh, to eight generations, then we're going to go from just 20 people at the beginning of this model to over 2,500 in just eight generations. And that's roughly two centuries. So imagine that we're starting with 20 million people. 
All right, we're going from 20 million people to two and a half billion people in just 200 years. And that's with that fertility rate of four in this simple model. That's just amazing. So there's our exponential growth curve. Now, that might be unrealistic, we might think. So what if we push the fertility rate in our model down to three? Well, that does slow things down. So now over those eight generations, we're simply going from 20 people to 350, roughly. And that looks quite better. Uh, going from 8 million, say, to 350 million in just 200 years, um, that's actually pretty similar to the growth of population in the United States over the last uh, two centuries. So growth is still exponential, but now it's taking closer to two generations to double. And of course, we could push the fertility rate lower, but in this model, as long as we're above two, the growth is going to be exponential. And as we go from generation to generation forward, it's going to get higher and higher. So let's change our assumptions here so we can see something else. Let's assume that four generations are alive all at once. And this is generation five to generation eight. And something that you can see if we uh, lay these on their side is that the most recent generation is the broadest. Generation five is quite narrow relative to generation eight. And this actually produces a pattern which we see in rapidly growing populations. The youngest generations are the widest and the oldest generations are the narrowest. So here's a population pyramid of the Sudan and you can see that the population over age 60 is quite slight whereas it's very broad from age 0 to 4. And you'll say, well that has a lot to do with mortality and you're right. People die as they get older. But partly what we're seeing here is not just mortality but we're seeing a rapidly growing population and that's why that population pyramid is so broad at the bottom. And here's another example to illustrate this. This isn't the Sudan, but this is a subgroup in the United States known as Mennonites. This is the population pyramid of the Wenger Mennonites who live in about 16 communities from Pennsylvania to Wisconsin. And you'll see that this pyramid is also very wide at the bottom and narrow at the top. And the mortality rate is quite low. And longevity is quite long, as in the American population generally. But because the population is growing so rapidly, the ratio of adult women to children is 8.3 children per woman. And... Uh, 38% of the women in the community have given birth to 10 or more children. And that means the median age is 16.4 years. Half of the population is 16 and under, and half is over 16. And indeed, uh, only 4% of the Mennonite population is over 65. And again, this has nothing to do with mortality. It has to do with fertility. And we can contrast the Mennonite population pyramid then to that of contemporary Japan. So if we look at Japan, the median age is 46 years. Half of the population is over 46 and half under 46. Whereas for the Mennonites, it was 16 years. And the fertility rate, the total fertility rate for Japan is 1.4 which is below replacement. So what this shows is a population that's declining. And that's as interesting as a population that's rapidly increasing. How can we explain that? It's called the modern demographic transition, and we'll be looking at it next. Thank you for listening.